there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we have a fun unboxing and review of Regina's Watercolors, which is a handmade watercolor shop on Etsy. The, Regina's husband actually reached out to me um, and wanted, wanted to know if I would consider reviewing her watercolors. And um, I've actually heard of them a while back and they were intriguing. I don't know what it was that I kind of didn't circle back to this company, but um, one thing I absolutely loved about them was their transparency on their website. They have they, they make their paints using the base 12 colors of Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus liquid watercolors and they get their supplies from Dr. P.H. Martin. They are completely upfront with that and then they add their own watercolor medium them to make them a solid watercolor. And I already had the Dr. P.H. Martin Hydrus paints and that's probably why I didn't explore this brand uh, in the past. But um, the thing I find with the Hydrus watercolors is that I rarely use them because I have to go get them, unscrew the caps, put them in a palette, and with the hard water that I have where I live, a wibble well, um, I noticed that if I let the paint dry on the palette and I re-wet it, the liquid watercolors, it gets kind of grainy. So um, I kind of have to just get out what I need or I end up wasting it, and that's kind of a, a drag. I actually did this painting here with the Hydrus watercolors. So I do, I am a fan of the Hydrus watercolors and having them in a, in a, in a form where I can use a wet brush and have a solid watercolor, that is actually much more preferable to me. So I'm very excited to take a look at what they sent and they are so sweet. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I love seeing what's available for handmade products. Um, I love handmade business and um, and I think it's neat how there are so many companies coming out with really unique stuff. So they've been in business for a few years. Um, let's take a look at what they sent. Um, there is a letter here. I just opened it. I'm like, oh, this is so pretty. I think I'm going to do an unboxing in with the review. So if you're not interested in the unboxing, you can skip ahead to the review because I'll do a few pieces of artwork with these and then I'll come back and give you the full review. Um, so she started off with a lovely letter, which I already read. Um, it was very sweet. And, uh, but I'm not going to, that'll take a while to read on, on, uh, on camera. Um, so when I get a packaging fill like this, I actually save the, um, the paper crinkle because it's really handy if you ever, like, um, if you have like a party or something and you want to make a table scape, it's really fun to make like paper rosettes and other decorations like that on barbecue skewers and put them in like a mason jar. And then I'll put these like fill like this in a mason jar to like, make it coordinate with my table. So I always save this because it's really fun for doing table um, table arrangements with. Um, I have bags of it. Whenever I get this, I put it in a plastic bag. And um, that's why I use like plastic bags to get damaged, like uh, for my packaging and stuff. I'll save them and I'll use them to store this sort of thing. And then I just, um, and then I use it to, um, you know, for decorations I just, or for gift packaging or mailing or whatever, but generally for like decorations. So, um, I like this. It is it is obviously a paper grass, so or you could also use it in an Easter basket or something like that. Uh, so it would be you biodegradable because it's paper, but I do reuse it. So that's kind of cool that they sent that. And I don't have any of this teal green grass. I'm telling you what, guys, I have a collection. I've got purple and peach and craft. <laughs> All right, so this is Regina Watercolors Sampler Set. Paints made in the USA conforms to ASTM D4236. Palettes and sets assembled in the USA. Um, in, in, uh, Columbus City, North Columbus, no, Columbus City, Indiana. I'm sorry, I can't read the real small stuff because, um, it contains parts made in China for Regina's watercolors, probably like some of the palette pieces or whatnot. Um, I just, I, I'm waiting for new glasses. I just had an eye appointment, so I, I don't have them yet. Packaging tips, refrigerate your paints before unpackaging to reduce stickiness. So we might do that. I might just take a peek at them and then I might pop them in the freezer or the fridge to help unwrap them because it's uh, actually raining. It's pouring right now and it's summer in Maine, which is kind of a humid situation. Uh, use mini spatula to pry pans off packaging. Oh, okay. So these, I did hear that these are kind of a sticky paint. So they packaged it so it won't be a mess when it arrives. So that's nice. Choking hazard small parts. Keep away from small children. The thin film of packaging may cling to nose and mouth and prevent breathing. All right. I don't have any small children, so I think I am good. And although I sniff my paints, I'll make sure I don't let them get stuck to my nose. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh, we got a little brush. This is a, like a travel size brush, size four. I don't see how it opens. I might have to snip the, I think I'll probably have to snip the end. I'm telling you guys, my desk is a mess. I've been doing shop packaging for my 
new little shop, my new little booth in a, in a shop in Brewer. So just got a little, I got to wash the sizing out, just a tiny little brush here. I'd say it's probably like a size four, or maybe it said that on the package. I might have said that on the package. Um, so let's see, Regina's watercolor makes something beautiful. Uh, okay, it goes over the color system, tells, tells about the paint, um, and about the palettes, and care and maintenance. We use the 11 foundation colors to create our full color line. So you can just buy the foundation set, which is a set of 11 colors, and be able to mix everything. See, they're honest. They're not just trying to sell you the bigger set because they have it, which is nice. And this, I think the sampler set comes with everything. And I believe you can get their, um, their paints in different sizes. As pro tip, label your pans. So there's room on the bottom to write on them with a Sharpie. There's a little swatch card with the numbers and names. And I, it's fairly small, but I can actually, I can actually read it, especially I can read the numbers, which are probably the most important thing. I'd probably just put a number on them, honestly, if they've got a little legend like this. And, uh, we have got the, Regina's color and the pigment name so that like they did use kind of like uh, cute names that is there that are like I would say propriety names but then they say what the color is so like if you're if you've got this palette and you're following somebody's tutorial or you're following a tutorial in a book or a DVD or something or a YouTube video you can look and say when they say quinacridone quin magenta deep red rose you'll know you'll know gamboge for instance Hansa yellow light you'll know the customary names to go with the pigments as well as their um, proprietary names. Because a lot of times palettes come out and they have cute names, especially handmade watercolors. Um, but if you're a beginner and you're not really that sure of like the undertones in the color or what the customary name is, you could get really confused if you're trying to follow a tutorial. So that's nice that they offer that as well. And refrigerator freeze pans one to two hours before unpackaging to temporarily reduce stickiness. Use a mini spatula to pry off the packaging. Okay, so let's take a look here. Me, hopefully I can open this to show you without having to refrigerate it. Oh my gosh, aren't those the cutest? Oh, those are little. Okay, I'm so glad they numbered them because it would be really, um, I think it would be really difficult to be able to tell what they were. So let's open these up. Hopefully they all open up. I'm surprised at how well that opened up because... Uh, well, I love my M. Graham watercolors. Those can get sticky in palettes. These seem to be doing just fine. Look how shiny. Look how glossy. Oh, it comes with a little mini spatula. This is probably what the made in China part is because... Let's see. This is adorable. It's kind of like a little activity. You know, it's kind of like the, the Ikea um, principle where you you feel where you you're assembling something and it gives you like uh, more ownership about it like okay so you know what i think that these probably will go um they're probably packaged so that when you put them in the palette they'll be in the right order because they the way they're numbered i think yeah i think that's how oh those are pretty oh let me see i'm smelling them Really, I don't smell any odor, but maybe when I, um, maybe when I add water to them, I'll be able to smell something. Three, let's put that one right there. I think that's probably how they're going to go in the palette. Oops, I, I'm going I'm to have to do... I bet that's how they go. That's just so practical. <laughs> yeah, those are kind of, it's kind of glossy there to prevent it from sticking, I think. But you know what? I love, it's just cardstock. It's just cardstock. So there's not like a million pans to unwrap, which I can appreciate as someone who reviews a lot of watercolors. How stinking cute is that? Oh my gosh. And if these are concentrated like the, um, like the Dr. P.H. Martins, then that's going to go a long ways. Okay. Oh, look at this. So we've got a swatch chart in a, in a plastic sleeve. So we can paint our swatch chart and we can slide it right back in here after it's dry, let it dry. And then we, and it's all arranged the way that it goes. It's all, 
Is it? Yes, this is all in the order that that they sent it to me. Oh my gosh, that's just way too, that's way too logical. Uh, an art supply company being logical? <laughs> well, now I've seen everything. Okay, so that's gonna be fun to put together. I'll do, I'll probably do that off camera. Although, you know, I think they're magnets, so I think that'll go, probably go pretty well. All right, so let me set my, my fluff aside, because I will reuse that. I always think reusing is better than recycling. Plus, we don't have recycling in our town, unfortunately. So, um, so it definitely is in my case. Well, let's just cover that up. I don't want to give away any surprises. So this is, I can use that tissue paper too. I'll put it in my wrapping stash. Regina's watercolor makes something beautiful. Is this a sticker? Palette cover sticker. Remove backing and apply to cases design. It's like an activity, guys. This is kind of fun. Okay. Let's see. What do we, oh, look at the pretty bag. It's velvet. I bet I could fit, let's see. I bet I could fit a mini, um, this has got a little heft to it. It does not feel chintzy. Can I, I, oh, I don't know, maybe. Maybe I could fit a tiny little sketchbook in there. I could definitely fit a couple of watercolor postcards and watercolor marks in there if I just want to like bring that in a water brush and, you know. You know, I feel like you're at a craft fair and you're just sitting in the booth and it's slow. It's nice to have a little something, a demo you can work on because then people can see how you work. Oh, look how shiny that, I think, this is glass. Oh wow, that's cool. That's gonna mix really well. This is magnet. So let's let's put our palette together. You, of course, you know, speed speed forward if you're not interested in this. So of course, first I'm gonna do it my way and see if I can pull this off with my fingers. Oh, I can. Oh, it sticks. Oh, wonderful. This is fun. I feel like um I feel like I'm a handmade watercolor maker now. <laughs> I've got some smudge on my fingers already. Maybe I sh ah. I probably should get the spatula out. Hopefully I don't contaminate any colors. I don't think you're gonna need to pre-spray these guys because I think they are going to be plenty moist. This would probably be handy if you live um, someplace that's really dry. So there's our first row. I'm gonna wash my hands before I touch that white one, let me tell you that. <laughs> This is so cool. This is quick though, you know? They thought of everything. So probably this is gonna be a better situation with a round brush because of how small the pans are. You're gonna to have to be really careful if you wanna use like a flat brush and probably nothing bigger than a half inch or number 12 flat, just because of the, um, the width of the pans. They kind of remind me of makeup pans but any makeup pans I've ever like recycled have been, or re, I would say upcycled, I've washed to reuse, weren't magnetic. They're like um, aluminum. So these are must be steel, must be like a stainless steel or something if they don't rust. Or a coated, a steel that's been coated. This is neat. I love how these are magnetic. So it would be really easy if you didn't like this arrangement or if you wanted to, to pull out the 11 foundation colors and do like a, um, just do a little um, like travel palette, like maybe take a tiny, like a little, I don't know, a little, um, I know something, I'm gonna spray my fingers with some water and wipe that. Um, like take a little, I don't know, like a um, small tin, small business card holder or something like that and make your own little, Make your own little travel palette or just like pull up those basic colors or maybe you're doing a class and you want to cross-reference and take just the colors you need out so you're not confused. But definitely swatch them because they're very transparent so they look, the when your colors are really transparent they look really dark in the pans and it can be very confusing to figure out what you have. like you know gouache or pastel where you'd be able to see exactly you know you'd look at the the color of the stick and you'd be able to tell what you have all right so now we have five i'm glad i didn't have to freeze these because i didn't want to have to wait i want to i want to use these we'll so we'll do the swatch card together how about that i hope it's uh i have no idea what they've done the, the swatch card on sometimes with like um like especially with like dot cards they the paper is not the best because to get the paint to stick to it and the dark dot card form and be able to print on it, they have to have 
like um, a paper that's not quite a size because I don't want the dots to pop off. But hopefully, because it's not a dot, dot card paper, it will be it will be pretty good. So they get an A for a minimal packaging. Even though it's cardstock, it's not like a plastic coated wrapper and wax paper or just plastic or uh, or something like that. So I, I think that's a win. Oh, get a little extra. Oh, you know that little space on the side of it is for that brush. That would make a lot of sense. Ah, I really don't want to contaminate that white. <laughs> I wonder how opaque it is. I typically, well, I sometimes use a white gel pen or a little white gouache. A lot of times the white watercolors are not opaque enough to do highlights with. And I generally don't mix. I usually use water to lighten a color unless it's something where I really need that creaminess, like I'm painting a pastry or something and I really want that kind of pastel creaminess. Let's see if that brush fits in the side. All right, let me spray my fingers, wash them off again. Get a little towel over there, I'll paint my hands on. Okay, that's cute. Let's see if our, where'd our brush go? Did I leave it? Please don't tell me I lost my brush already. No, here it is. Let's see, will that fit? Oh, darn it, no, it's just, a, it's too long. You know what would fit there? That horrible Windsor and Newton mini brush would fit there, but I don't want that. I don't want to sully the set with that brush. I can't stand those brushes. I don't want to stick the sticker on because I love the little gold, a little, little I mean, like metallic silver pomegranate there. Make something beautiful, Regina's watercolor. This. It's so neat. It feels really um, sturdy. Very cool. I'll use a sticker for something else, maybe. So let's see. What else did she send? A Journey Through Watercolor Premium Watercolor Book Illustrated by Shanna Fleetwood. Hope I pronounced that right. Let's see. Oh, I can put the... I could put the uh, packaging stuff right in there. So let's take a look. So we got a limited cover with the disc bound things. So when I went on vacation, I brought some of the Alta New watercolor, um, watercolor sheets, like for cards and stuff. And I brought those in case anybody wanted to paint with me. So it was really nice. Okay, so these, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick them up. These are really, really pale. So it'll almost give you like a no line watercolor look. So that's a pomegranate. I don't think any of these are going to show up on camera. Um, I really don't think they're going to show up. We've got a some a fuchsia flowers, a skull, like a, like I don't know, like a some sort of mammal, maybe like a horse skull or something like that, with a rose. We've got puppies. Well, that's pretty, and it feels like a really good quality paper. It feels like it might be cotton paper, and it probably says. A uh, peace sign with sunflower, peace sign like fingers. Daffodils. This is great for you know you just want to paint, but you don't feel like drawing anything. And it will look like a it will look like a um, a painting when you're done because you're not going to see the lines of mermaid in a fishbowl. <laughs> Hollyhocks. A camera and a lens. This is really interesting video footage, isn't it? Uh, this looks like. Maybe a sweet pea flower? I'm not 100% sure on that one. Some bonbons, some candy bonbons. A, it looks like a mining, a mining mine. A mine with like a, a door and a little railroad tracks with a, um, a cart of rocks. A kitty cat looking out a window with snow on the ledge on the window box, that's cute. Um, oh, we've got this kind of Asian um, waves with the storm clouds. Um, we've got a bum. A bum! <laughs> it's a bum, like jeans. Jean shorts on a bum. <laughs> Where else would they be? <laughs> I mean, okay, meet the illustrator. Shanna Fleetwood is a mixed media artist who draws inspiration from nature and scripture. Shanna was born and raised in Indiana. Well, she still resides in the countryside with her husband and two children, uh, Shanna and Regina, here of Regina's Watercolors, and um, a little more information about the illustrator, which is nice. I'm glad that they give props to the illustrator. That's really sweet. That's so nice. Because a lot of times, you know, when you're hired to do a job, you're, you know, they might mention who you are, but that's so sweet. They actually put a photo of her on the back. Oh, guys. My goodness, I should have just looked on the back because I'm going to zoom in a bit here. You can see all the illustrations a little bit darker. Um, why does that say mature? 
Was there something I didn't see? I gotta adjust my glasses. I don't, what's mature about the pomegranate? Am I not seeing something there? Maybe they just mean that you have to be a mature artist. I don't think you see anything like naughty about that. Hmm. I don't know. I'm really curious. I want to look, look carefully at that pomegranate picture. Um, printed and assembled by Regina Watercolor LLC. Illustrations printed with light gray, water resistant pigment ink, 100% cotton paper. I was thinking it felt like cotton paper. 15 sheets, 140 pounds, all rights reserved. That's really fun. Oh, it's bee paper. See, they're transparent. They tell you the pigments are from Dr. Page Martin's. They tell you this is Arches watercolor paper. Uh, B, I'm sorry, this is B watercolor paper. You know what? I like it. I, I don't like it when companies try to pull one over on us. And these guys don't. They're completely, they're completely transparent. Well, that is fun. Okay, I think this is just the packaging stuff. You know what? I'm actually going to leave the packaging right in here because I actually have a box. I have some other ones in boxes too, so that's just an easier way to store it. It's going to take up less space, I think, in this box. Um, these little cards, I will. I think I will get rid of those. I'll make sure I have all the numbers. Well, it should be for they're in order, so I guess I don't need to worry about that. Yeah, this stuff like expands. I'm gonna I'm gonna push it down in there and put it with my packaging. But uh, let's. You guys want to swatch? Let's see. What are we doing for time? You know what? I'm gonna tidy up my space. We'll come back and do our swatches together. All right. I took the. Um, I'm just going to soak that brush in the water for a second. I took the, the thing out of its sleeve, the swatch out of its sleeve, and I got my palette here. So let's do some swatching. It didn't take long for the glue to come out of the brush, the sizing. So we're going to see how this brush is going to do. I generally like a bigger brush anyway, but this is small, so I think that'll work pretty well. So let's start off with the fuchsia. Oh, this is going to be nice to mix on. Oh, that's glad. That's nice. I don't think I have any palettes that have a glass, um, that have a glass surface. I'm going to do a little darker in the corner maybe and then like fade it out. I'm going to do it with my rag. Put my rag there. I don't know if I can do that in this little square. I think that's probably too much to ask for this little swatch card. I can't tell the paper on the swatch card. Actually, it's really hard to tell the, um, it's really hard to tell a ton about the colors from the swatch other than just like what they are, in my opinion, especially on a small swatch. So the proof will be in the pudding. When I come back and I've done a few paintings and I'll do one of the coloring pages. I don't know if I'll do the sexy pomegranate, which is, I still don't know why it's called mature, uh, or if I'll do one of the other pictures, but um, I'll do one from there too. Ooh, that sunflower is really nice. Uh, and we'll see. Maybe we'll do the poppies because I painted the, the my poppies for my um, brush packaging design. I used Arches paper for that, but I used the liquid watercolor, so maybe I will, uh, I will use I'll do the poppies in there, so we'll have a little bit of a basis of a comparison there. That aquarium is greener, kind of like a phthalo green. So the price on this kit is a uh, delphinium is a blue flower. I was kind of like, I was thinking daffodil and I was kind of like, oh no, did I get the wrong one? Um, the price on this kit is 97 and change, so it's around $100. No, it's $99.97, hold on. I think... Is it here? I, I opened up the page um, and it's Regina's Watercolors, not uh, Regina's Watercolors.com. Regina's Watercolors.com. Um, I don't know if I had said Etsy. I thought I, I might have said Etsy before, so I just wanted to clarify that. Yes, yeah, so this is $99.95 for this set. Then they've got, and these are the smallest pans, and these pans are $1.95 a piece, I think. Then they have some with bigger pans, they have the plus set. Um, and then they have the foundation set, and the foundation set would be the all the base colors that all the other colors are made from. So you can make all the colors from this set here that I'm going to show you from those 11 colors that are in the foundation set. You could also just pull those colors out. So I think there's 42 in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 7. Is that 42? Um, hold on, I can just look on the description. <laughs> I think it's 42 colors. Uh, 
42 colors, yes, of the smaller pans. Um, so these do contain, oh shoot, these do contain um, honey and ox gall. So if you're looking for a vegan paint, then they recommend actually just going with the Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus colors. Um, so they're not afraid to, you know, recommend something else. Um, I have, my diet is vegan. I know some of you guys know that. Um, my diet is vegan. It has been since I was, uh, before my 18th birthday, actually. And, uh, so like, oh my gosh, 20, uh, 28 years. Um, but I, ha but I do use like Arches watercolor paper, which has gelatin sizing. I do use, um, paint that has ox gall and honey in them. I'm grim, my favorite paint and it contains honey so my diet is vegan but my lifestyle is not although I don't buy sable brushes I haven't purchased a sable brush in 20 years but I still use the ones that I have because it would be wasteful not to and they do last and they're high quality I just don't want to um, support that industry I did not pre-activate these colors so that might get kind of transparent as it dries we're gonna have to see I went around the names on some of these if I thought it'd be hard to read them I feel like that this, I will say this feral is a little bit loose. Um, the brush is fine. I, but like I said, I'm not a big fan of small brushes and the feral does feel a little bit loose on this. Nothing huge, but it's worth mentioning because th things like that, if you're painting for a long time with one brush, it can get, it can get a little bit um, bothersome. But it does have a nice point on it, which is like my big pet peeve about like the Windsor Newton travel brush is that it's small but it's, the, it's not pointed at all. It's like, doesn't have any detail capability and it's too small to really carry much paint. Uh, this one carries much more paint than that. Although it doesn't fit in the in the case. It's kind of a shame because there's a, there's a little room there. So if you have the Windsor Newton brush, um, that would fit under there. I'm just making sure I grab the right one. That's this one, Red Onion. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's pretty. I could see myself using that one a lot. Oop, we're gonna get a little spill into the next, into the neighbor. Why do I have my cloth over there? That should be over there. I'm gonna put that right over the name though. I feel like I want a little, maybe a little bit darker streak of that. So this is gonna be interesting. I have no idea how these are gonna, how these are gonna behave. I have no idea what this paper is too. I'm just gonna use it as a color, uh, a color code basically. I might write the numbers on them. I might not. Oh, they do offer these in the, like I mentioned, the if you bought the foundation set, which is the 11 colors you can mix everything with, they're bigger pans. Um, and then they also have half pans that are, I think they're $6. I'm just going to really quickly click over there and see what the prices are while I'm thinking of it because I will forget otherwise. Um, so I think you're basically like with this, um, Let's see, so 42 times two would be 84. So you yeah, so you are paying extra for the palette. So it is cheaper if you just want to get the paints. Um, so the, uh, the, they have half pans that have seven ml of liquid paint. The, um, I'm trying to see where they said that. I just remember the seven ml. 3.5 mls in the squares and 1.75 in the rectangles. So uh, the rectangles are almost twice as big or maybe twice as big as these. And then the um, then the half pans are twice as big as the squares. So just to give you an, um, an idea and I'll look at prices here. 5.95 for a half pan. I'm just trying to see what the square is. $1.95 for the rectangle and the square is looking for a price. I'll add it to my cart and see what it says. Two ninety five. So so about two, three, and six. So yeah, basically, um, I would say doubles. It uh, doesn't double. It's um, so like the smallest ones would be the more expensive. That's usually what happens, and the other two are about the same per ml. Oh my gosh, math is not my strong point. My strong suit, midnight. Oh, that's kind of like a um, a greenish black, greenish bluish black. It'll be interesting to see if any of these colors granulate. Um, I will have to look at the. I'll have to do some painting with it. Really, I really don't have enough space here to see. Maybe if I'm seeing if anything has ultramarine blue in it, maybe it will. I'll get to all of that stuff when we 
um, when we do our final review. I have to say it is a little confusing having all of these colors so close together. So I probably recommend the foundation set. Maybe for a beginner, like this is aqua. And you'll definitely want to have that. Your um, oh, that's pretty. You're definitely going to want to have that swatch handy when you're using these so you don't get confused. But the fact that they're so transparent in the pans is a good sign that they are a high quality paint. And plus, I know Dr. Paige Martin's the uh, the where they're getting the pigments from. Those paints are really good. So. Well, that's kind of pretty, that eucalyptus. It makes me want to paint a eucalyptus. Not like the kind of bamboo the, the um, pandas eat, but you know like when you buy eucalyptus, like dried eucalyptus? It was a big thing in the 90s. We'd buy dried eucalyptus and we'd like put it everywhere in our houses. And it had, it was that color, kind of like that aloe, kind of like succulent. Ooh, succulents, that would be fun to paint with these. Spring, it's kind of like a may green color. Yeah, I just love how transparent this company is. I love how transparent the paints are, literally, and I love how transparent they are in their business practices. Avocado, that kind of looks like a uh, a sap green or a hooker's green. And I always, oh, this is gorgeous. This looks like a nice olive sap green. I like that a lot. Um, I tend to, even when I'm using uh, paints that use different names, ooh, that's pretty, that olive is pretty. Yeah, this is more like olive sap hookers. Um, I usually go by the customary names by look when I'm doing a tutorial because it just makes more sense because if you're going to go like refill your palette and you're going to buy a color to refill, you're going to be going with one of the more... Oh, that's a pretty color, cattail. It's like a burnt umber. Um, you'll be going with the more... You probably go to a, you know, craft store and you'll buy a tube of paint and it will be like more of a, uh, cus like a customary name. Now look at that color. That's a, a good example of why you want to swatch. Look how orange that is and look how red it looks. It almost looks like paprika in the pan, but there it looks like a, uh, like tangerine kind of color. Oh, and this one's called tangerine. Let's see what this tangerine looks like. Oh, that's pretty. It does look like a tangerine. Yum. Sorry about the noise in the background. It is Saturday morning. Um, I went to walk the dog, it was pouring, so she wasn't having it, and everybody else was still asleep, so I'm like, I'm going to come down here and get these watercolors swatched, because I really want to use them. I want to use them on today's World Watercolor Month prompt. It's July 2nd, when I'm doing the swatch, when I do these videos where I do the, um, when I do the unboxing, and then do the review, there it could be a week or two or three vintage rows. That's pretty. Um, there could be a few weeks in between when the review is actually filmed and um, hopefully I've gotten the habit of like making a file folder on my computer and saving the footage right there right after I do it oh grapefruit is pretty so I don't um, lose it so you can buy the foundation set and you can make yourself a color mixing chart and you can make your colors now some of these are going to have different proportions you know, like it might have more red or might have three colors, not just two colors. And I think they probably have all the information of what's mixed with what so you can make your own, which is, again, oh, okay, quick, don't quote me on it. I think I saw that they did that, but maybe I am. Maybe I am misremembering. Well, that you'll have more information at the final review that's going to come along in a few minutes for you and a few weeks for me or maybe just a few days because it's World Watercolor Month so I'll be doing a lot of painting so ooh, that's pretty alright so here we have our swatch card I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna put it into its sleeve um, so there we have it and um, we'll see you in the future in a couple minutes and you'll see some examples of finished artwork and I'll let you know what I think of these paints all right, future Lindsay is here with the rest of the review. I have done a few, I've done three little World Watercolor Month paintings with the Regina watercolors. One is filmed and on my YouTube channel. I did one of the coloring book pages and I also did some swatches and color mixing um, stuff here. So let's uh, let's get right into it. I put my case, I cleaned my, uh, my palette up and put it back in the case. Let's take a look at these colors again. Um, I noticed that my case has gotten a little bit scratched um, just over the, I don't know if, if I can catch the light in there. You can see I use fancy aluminum clip lights from 
<laughs> Home Depot for my lighting here. I don't know if you can see the scratches on there if I catch the light, but um, there are some scratches in there. Now this did come with a sticker that I could put on the front of the um, of the case and it is opaque so that would cover up any of those scratches. I really like the look of the black with the silver pomegranate on it so I didn't put the sticker on but um, let's see you can see it's white if I open it up um, but I might. Uh, we'll see. I still kind of like the look of the black. Um, the glass mixing palette worked really well. I found this was plenty of space to do my mixing. I would wipe it off between projects but I didn't feel like I needed to clean it off during a project which was good. Um, and now I'm going to try to catch the light with the paint so you can kind of see. I don't know if you'll be able to tell um, how much of the paint I've used. Um, I feel like with the, some of the primaries I do have some significant divots in there. Um, these are very sticky. Let's go over the pros and cons. Let's go over the pros and cons and we're gonna talk about our sw swatches. Actually no, let's go Let's go over our swatches first. But this is how this looks after four paintings essentially. Not too bad. You can see some uh, some of the colors have been used up. Um, there's no beading on the palette because it is glass. So here I swatched out all the colors. So I here and here. And what I did was I wanted to test the flow. So I did a patch of water that was about, I would say one by one and a half. And then I'd add some color to the top and let it flow and see how it flowed. Some colors flowed pretty well, some didn't flow very well. Um, then I, after it was all dry, I went through and did a stripe of glazing over. It didn't really lift the color underneath. I went to see how well they would lift. Um, they lifted okay. Um, but these are made from staining colors. When I show you the pigments that were used here, um, you'll see why. I'm actually surprised at how well some of them lifted, and I think that's down to the um, the honey and the gum arabic, and maybe even the ox gall. I think just adding the extra thick binder that they that they make that they add to the Dr. P. H. Martin Hydrus watercolors. I think that just prevents the um, the paint from soaking into the fabric. This is cotton paper too that I'm swatching on. Um, oh, I do want to do one more little swatch on the white because I only swatched that once. It's a PW6 so it should be pretty opaque but where it's made from that that, that uh, look and you can kind of see how I can lift that up off the... Sometimes if you're trying to get a concentrated bit of color the pans lift off which is kind of um, aggravating. There I just want to give that another another coat just to see how it did. Um, but the colors are very clean and crisp. The Your main colors are coming from these first 11 colors. Um, they don't mix any colors with white, so you do get, you could get 12 unique colors and mix all your other colors from that. Actually, you can mix all your colors from those first 11, 1 through 11. And I just swatched them out on this color wheel here so you could see. So our fuchsia here, uh, a little bit of blue got in there. And that's one thing about this palette that I will say, the colors are so close together and they're so shallow and they're so fill overfilled kind of, that which is a good thing. I'd rather have more paint than less paint, but it's really easy for paint to get into its neighboring well. Uh, so that's just something to kind of think about if you want to get this palette. If you got the set with the, uh, the 11 foundation colors, the, you have a little more room in the palette, so you could actually spread the pans out a little bit um, and give yourself a little bit more room. Plus they're bigger pans, so you would have a little more room to get your paint without kicking paint into the neighboring pan. Um, so our first color, our fuchsia, which that got a little blue in it, like I said, that, that's a color that it should be, um, is PR122. The next color, this rose red here, um, oh I should go by, let me tell you what they're called here from their, from their swatch fuchsia. Rose is what they call the second color. This is um, PR170, so those two are per, uh, single pigments. The next one is um, Poppy, which is PR198. Now the next one that, uh, Gam well it's Gamboge in PH Martin color, it's Sunflower in their color, um, and it is a combination of PY65 and PR188. Our next color, which they call Daffodil, is PW3, which is a Hansa Yellow. Um, the uh, green is a PG7, which is, which is a Thalo Blue, I'm sorry, a Thalo Green Blue shade. Um, the next color, and they call that Aquarium. The next color, which is called Delphinium, um, is PB15, your typical phthalo blue. The next color they call Blueprint, they, um, and Dr. Peach Martin calls this Ultramarine, but it's not made with a typical PB29 pigment. This is actually a combination of PB15, which is phthalo blue, and PB19, which is a quinacridone violet. Um, the next color here is that same combination of pigments, but it is PB19 plus PB15, so it's got more of the violet and less of the blue. Um, rather than like a dioxazine violet, but it does have a very similar color to it. Um, and this one is called Blueberry. 
uh, no, I'm sorry, this one's just called Violet. I was, I was missing, I was skipping a row. This next, next color is Chocolate, which is a mix of PY43, PR170, PR269, and PBK7. Um, so that's kind of strange for a limited palette to use a brown that's a mixture of four colors. I have a, I think I know why it's done that way, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then our black is PBK7. Our white, which I didn't swatch here, is uh, PW6, which is um, titanium white. So these are the original... 12 Dr. Page Martin Hydrus watercolors. So if you like liquid watercolor, you could buy that set one from Dr. Page Martin and have them in like dropper bottles. Now the one downside and one thing I was really excited about this set is that I have found because I have a well um, rather than public um, water from like a city, we have hard water and I've noticed when I paint with the the Hydrus liquid watercolors and they're on my palette, I have to put the paint out fresh whenever I use it, so I always have to keep the bottles out and I have to just put out a little bit. And otherwise, if I let it dry and I go to reactivate it, which I do sometimes because I don't want to waste it, it does get a little bit of sedimentation. And it's not like a pretty granulation sedimentation; it's more of like a um, like a silty uh, quality. And I think it's due to my hard water because I don't think everyone has that issue. But if you do have a well or you live somewhere where your public water is a little on the hard side, then um, you could have that issue too, but I did not have that issue here, even when I reacted, reactivated dry paints on my palette. So something about it being dispersed in the binder that they've created has made it be able to be dried out and then re-wet. And it could be because these stay in a constant sticky form. Um, in Maine, in, in summer, it's kind of humid, and this has been very, these paints have been very sticky, sticky almost liquidy, like if I, um, let me just, let me use the paintbrush that they supplied here in this set. And let me just show you, hopefully, I'm hoping I can, let's just take a color that I've been using here quite a bit. Can you see it's really, um, look at how much is on my, can you see how much is on my brush? I don't know if that's, I mean, see how much you pick up, because really, um, I probably can't put that back in there, but that's okay, I can reactivate it off there to use it later. But, uh, but look at how it doesn't bead. I mean, isn't that nice? But I feel like um, I feel like I'm gonna wear it and use through these pretty quickly. These are the smaller pans that are $1.97 each, open stock, or $1.95, under two dollars, open stock. So if you do use one up and want to replace it, you can. And then they have the larger squares. I think my recommendation would be um, if you um, if you're curious about this brand to get the foundation set because it's about half the price. So this one's around. Um, I think this one is just under a hundred, and I think. The, um, I'm just seeing if I can pull it up on my computer really quick. I think the foundation set is under 50. Let me see if I can grab that really quick. My computer's giving me, oh, right here, sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think I would recommend that because you do get bigger pans. So it's like getting the equivalent of 20, 22 colors. Um, it's well, it's fifty-seven ninety-five to get the eleven foundation colors, which are, which are these, this, these two rows here minus white, and uh, in bigger pans, and you've got space so you can move because the palette's the same size, so you can move the pans around and give yourself a little more room. I'd probably recommend that to see if you like it, and then um, you can always get the sampler set if you want the convenience colors, but all of these colors, all of the rest of these are made from those 11, so you really don't need them um, if you, you know, want to learn color theory. Now let's look at this as far as like a teaching tool. Now the reason I think that the original 12 colors from Dr. P.H. Martin's do not contain a lot of single pigments is because I think those are really, um, they are a fine art watercolor, they are light fast, but they're also airbrush and fountain pen compatible. And I think that's why they're not using PBR7 for the brown and not using PB29 for ultramarine blue um, and the P.H. Martin's um, recipes because uh, because those could more easily clog a pen or an airbrush. So that makes sense on that side that they're using them. They've got very vibrant, transparent colors. I didn't get any mud. None of these are muddy. When I glaze over, I'm not seeing chalk or mud or anything. I think these are, because they're developed to be more of um all around, all purpose, liquid watercolor, pen, airbrush, paint slash ink. Um, a lot of these are using your synthetic organic pigments, uh, like the um, like the quinacridones, the thalos. We do have some inorganic ingredients like PBK7. That might be the only, uh, there's a PY43, which is like yellow ochre. Um, and that brings me to this range as a whole. 
I really miss having a true ultramarine blue and a true yellow ochre and also a uh, PBR7 brown because I'm more of a traditional painter that's going to not be using an airbrush with their watercolors. So that's uh, just a, a small caveat for me. That would be one of the cons. But other than that, I, I think as far as mixing, you're going to be able to mix fine with them. So I did a cool mixing and a warm mixing triad here. So for my cool mixing, I used Rose, which was number two. I used Five, which was Daffodil. And I used Seven, which was Delphinium, because it's more of like a, your Thalo blue. And uh, I was able to get a nice gray-black color. I was able to get a decent orange, a very nice purple, and a very vibrant green. When I did my warm colors, I chose the, um, the blueprint for my warm my warm um, blue because it's closer to red and uh, typically I'd be using an ultramarine blue there but that is the warmest blue that they make um, so I got that kind of dull eggplant which I would expect if I mixed it with a warm red and I got a nice, nice orange I got a really pretty olivey green in there um, but I really don't think you're going to have any issues mixing with those 11 colors it's just um, I think that would be, for me, ultramarine blue is a color I use more than anything, so not having that in a palette would be a bit of a, um, a bit of a bummer. What I think I'd probably recommend, if you already have watercolors, maybe you have a little space in your palette, buy some half pans. The half pans are very reasonably priced, I think, at $6 a piece, and then you can see what you think of this paint. Um, if you love the Dr. Ph. Martin inks, but you just don't like to deal with the hassle of the droppers and not having it be able to recon kind of dealing with the waste if you put too much out, this is a really good option for that. Um, I'm just going to look at my pros and cons really quick so I don't forget anything. Um, so I did notice when I was using these, especially if I was trying to get a thicker color, or as I was using it, the more you use these, the stickier they get. So towards the end of a painting, I'm going in there and I'm lifting um, um, the the uh, the pans can lift up out of the, um, like I kind of showed you with the white a minute ago, of course now it's not going to do it, but um, I ended up picking up the pain, paints, and one time I actually, one flipped over it and landed face down on top of another paint, it wasn't that big of a deal because the um, the other paint I, had, I hadn't used that much so it wasn't really sticky, but that's kind of a pain when you're working. Um, a lot of times I want to work up a really big juicy wash and um, so I'm kind of like frothing up some color to bring to my palette and um, they, they can scoot a little bit or they can flip out or you can just pick them up and then you've got this sticky pan that's really full and you've got to be able to get it off your brush and put it back in without getting your hands completely covered. So that would be a con. Um, multiple pigments in the mixes. Um, I assumed that probably all of these would be single pigment colors, but they aren't. So as you can see, this one has four pigments in it. This one has, uh, these have two, the, that one has two, that one has two. Um, Oh yeah, that's two pigments, right? I can't remember, did I say that was a single? That's a two. So only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are single pigments, and that one of those is a white. So your mixes here can have, um, you know, up to five, actually they could have up to six pigments in them. So they're, they didn't mix down to mud, but that's just something to keep in mind. And also there's not going to be any granulation with this particular set. So if they expand and they go to some of the other colors, like the ones that have a true ultramarine or true yellow ochre or some of the other pigments that granulate more, then that would be that, then you would get that effect. I don't know if they have plans to expand their base colors. I'm sure that's a big undertaking for a handmade business, but it's just something to, um, uh, to think about. And um, let's go to the pros. The, the colors are very smooth and vibrant. You can see there's no grain, there's no um, no chalkiness. If you are an illustrator and you want to get a really smooth, almost Copic-like flat wash, these are great colors for that. Um, I'll show you in some of my examples. You can do painterly techniques too, but these are a very smooth, transparent color. Um, they're the basically the Peach Martin's like Series 1 Hydrus watercolor in a solid form. Um, they rewet really well. I didn't have any issues with vibrancy. They were ready to go the second I touched a wet brush to them. I, in fact, I would not pre-spray these because they are so sticky. I also wouldn't travel with them because I think that, um, I think they, especially if you're going someplace like the beach, like if, if I took these to the, to the beach, like I did a couple weeks ago, because I was having problems with my paints that usually rewet really, that are dry really hard. I had trouble with those just being very goopy like this. Um, just because of the humidity and painting on the beach. So I wouldn't travel with these. This would be better as an at-home palette or if it's a travel palette, just kind of like a short trip travel, not like, you know, the tropical, wet, humid area travel. Um, and the glass mixing area, I think that's an extreme pro. I love that. And um, I would definitely want to keep this palette and either get 
replacement pans or refill those pans, or maybe they do sell empty pans. So that's another thing. If you love the look of this palette, you can get the empty pans, like a set of five for, um, gosh, it was pretty inexpensive. I'm thinking it was like $1.25 for a set of five pans, metal pans. I don't know how they're not rusty, to be honest. Let's see. You can get square pans, a set of five for $1.25. You can get um, the rectangle pans, which are these smaller ones. Let's see. You can get them in a pack of 10 or 42. Let's see what 42 square uh, rectangle pans would be. Um, 672? 672, boy, that's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, for, that's that's great if you want to just like, kind of have some to try your own paints in it. Um, yeah, I really like the palette. I think it's um, I think it's nice. It feels sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break. It feels kind of like a high quality, um, a really high quality makeup plastic makeup palette uh, that had like a mirror in it basically because like that would be about the same way. Most of the makeup I have is pretty cheap, so this feels much nicer than any makeup palette that I have. Um, and let's look at some of the artwork here, because I think I went through the pros and cons. Oh, but the, the biggest pro, I think, is the honesty of this company. So if you go to reginaswatercolor.com, they are completely transparent about where they get their pigments. They get it from Dr. Ph. Martin. They say if you're, you know, if you want to avoid animal products in your paints, because they do use honey and oxgall in theirs, honey is uh, to keep it moist and oxgall is to help it flow. Um, that you probably would want to just go for the Dr. Page Martin's ink. So they're not trying to, you know, to sell you, you know. I, I just feel like they're very transparent. I like that. Whether you like the, the style of paint or not, you're not going to be misled. So that's important. So I did one of their coloring book pages. I did the poppies since I had painted um, some poppies with Dr. Page Martin watercolors recently. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to just do the, this poppy illustration. I did some wet and wet in the background. I flicked on some water when it was still wet to get a little bit of a bloom effect. Um, yeah, it was fun. These have really faint lines and honestly, I know I mentioned my, my eye troubles. <laughs> um, but they are, they were kind of hard to see. Oh, I got something on that page. Um, they were kind of difficult to see the, uh, the lines when I was working. So that's something to consider. If you're thinking about getting this book, it is kind of hard to see. Um, I've used the Alta New coloring pages before that are on watercolor paper and they usually have a dark line and a light line. So you can do the no line watercolors or you can have it with a black outline. I prefer working with the black outline. I can draw my own sketch really light and be fine, but working from somebody else's sketch, I find that I need the, um, that I need a darker line. They show you the darker lines on the back, but um, but I think it's it was fun. It was really kind of nice, easy, relaxing thing. So if you like to do adult coloring, uh, if you like to use any water media at all, I think that would work good. Like your Zig, you know, real brush pens or your watercolor pencils, anything like that would work good in that paper. This is 100% cotton B paper. You're probably familiar with that. If you've this kind of reminds me, I buy the B paper by the 22 by 30 sheets. I got a really good deal on it a few years ago, and um, and yeah, this is. This is what that feels like. Um, very easy to use, nice paper. Okay, I have a tutorial for this. This was done with the uh, Regina's watercolors. I also used the frost for some of the uh, the ice cubes in there just to see how it would be and it worked out really well. And then I did this with the Regina's watercolor. That was the first thing I did with those because I just thought it'd be fun the, to, uh, to paint some art supplies with art supplies. And I did record that. If anybody wants me to edit that, I can edit it into a little tutorial. And then the other thing I did with their watercolors was this one right here. And I used uh, the color Ruby Blueprint. And um, I think I used Storm. And I think I used Chocolate. Those were the colors. But uh, very easy to control. I didn't have any issues. I was thinking at first that they didn't flow very well, so that's why I did the flow test, and that's why I did the wet and wet background on the poppies, because I wanted to double check on that. But they seem to flow just like any other typical watercolor. As you can see, they there are multiple pigments in some of the colors, but they are very vibrant. So um, I don't think you'd have a problem going with the foundation set and mixing. You do have a split primary. You've got uh, cool and warm red, warm and cool yellow, um, cool and warm blue, although I would still prefer ultramarine blue because that is still 
Phthalo blue is such a heavy influence in color that is still, I still would consider that kind of a cool blue, but you also get a green and a purple, so it's not really that big of a deal. It's not going to really give you a problem mixing. Um, but the fact that there are so many colors in that brown can be a little bit, um, I don't know, I think that might be able, that might throw you off a little bit. I would really want to have a yellow ochre in the uh, in the set because that's kind of the the color mustard that they made to look like a yellow ochre, I think, and it's still very. I think with yellow, like the beauty of yellow ochre is that it does have a bit of a body to it because of the um, the iron oxide pigment it uses. It does have a little bit of a of a girth that um, it just adds a different property. It's not really that opaque, but it, it adds a slowness to certain colors that can help you control them and get certain effects but that's just me that's probably a little bit not like what a beginner would really care about but um but i think that would be an excellent uh way to sample this this line of paints and see what you think or just get some half pants to put in the palette you already have especially if you're looking for something super vibrant because i mean these pack a punch if you look at those reds those yellows they really do pack a punch and they would be fun and if you if you could you could stick to the single pigments you could do the fuchsia the poppy um the daffodil the aquarium the uh, blueberry and get like some really bright colors that would really pack a punch and you could stay single pigment in fact that might be my recommendation actually um let's just swatch this out really quick and see what those colors would be if we if we did the single pigment colors so if you want to make a custom palette why did i just take that from there i could have just i could have just ah <laughs> today on Lindsay waste some art materials we're gonna review these colors. So there, you got a really nice, let's mix them together and see. And then we could do the Daffodil or Hansa Yellow Light. I'm using this a little thicker than I typically would, but I'm gonna, let's see what we get there. Mm, that's gonna make a nice orange. Then we do the green, the Aquarium, which is a Thalo Green. I, I'm really liking the swatch page, I gotta say. Oops, I got too much sale green. Ah, I got way too much. So, it's gonna overtake. Now I can take that, I can mix it in with some of that and get more of a sap green. Then we've got our, our Thalo Blue, which is called Blueberry, I think. No, Delphinium. Delphinium, so we'll just go over here so I don't cover up any of my words. You know, so you could do, you could do those, those, um, one, two, three, four, five colors, get them in half pans, put them in a palette. Maybe you got a palette that's more neutralized, you know, and you wanted to get a little bit of a, a little more oomph to them. Let's add a little bit of that blueberry to that color and see what that looks like on that end. I love doing rainbows, rainbow rose kind of. Oh yeah. I'm going to want for a purple. So I think that would be a great option. So what's six times five? 30? So for 30 bucks, you could get half pans of um, of that, of those colors, those single pigment colors, and mix from that. In fact, I think that would be a really excellent option. And then get a yellow ochre and an ultramarine blue from another a tube from another company. And um, I think that would give you a really excellent set of colors, especially if you're just looking to try it, you're not sure you want to go whole hog and get a get a set. Um, that's what I would recommend. Also, because I think they might they might work they might be get used up pretty quick. And these shallow pans just um, our colors want to mingle. They're single and they want to mingle, friends. So we gotta <laughs> we gotta shut it down. <laughs> we gotta shut down the mingling with our watercolors. But these were fun. Um, uh, I want to thank Regina's Watercolor for sending this out to me. Um, they were a delight to paint with. I really enjoyed using them on those three paintings and on that coloring sheet. And um, I think something like this, this is definitely going to be something I bring with me when I go to a, like a crafty night or a stamp show or if I have some friends over to craft. And um, oh, these are the disc bound pages. So let me show you. They're really easy to take out and put back into the book. They have uh, those little mushroom punch outs, kind of like a planner does. So um, very easy to put to take these out so you can work on them and put them back in when you're done. So you don't like have to work in the pad and risk getting schmutz on your other um, pages, although I still managed to do that somehow. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you like that sort of thing, I do recommend it. It's on 100% cotton watercolor paper. You don't see that a lot in your coloring books. 
But um, there you have it. I will link reginaswatercolor.com in the in the video description. I don't get anything if you buy these. Um, um, so I just want to let you know. I just think they're a really awesome, honest company. And um, now you have all the information to decide whether they're for you or not, I think. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these reviews. Until next time, happy crafting.